cooking and going on. And Dave would call me, and I'd look at the phone for a second, you know, because I knew if I answer this, my family ain't going to see me for a little bit. You know what I mean? And there was something pulling me to be like, answer Dave's call. Let's hang out. And I just knew, like, and I, there were several conversations like that. They always took at least an hour and a half to two hours. And one time he kept me up till two in the morning and I had to be somewhere at six working a job. But he said, if you can text me at 1130, I was just going to go ahead and call you. And I was like, all right, cool. Uh, and we stayed up, man. And the conversations we had, I'll never forget. We talked about history. We talked about politics. We talked about theology. And we made each other laugh. And he told me about his childhood and, and things. We always talked about World War II a lot because uh, we were both lovers of history and you know those conversations I'll never forget with him and I was thankful that I listened to the urge to pick up the phone because little did I know just a few weeks later it, you know I wouldn't have those conversations with him until I see him again and thank God I was able to go see him in the hospital and he after his first surgery and he looked so good, man. I was just like, man, this dude is doing great. And, uh, <clears throat> and then I heard after the second surgery, he was even better. And unfortunately something came along and, 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 and that wasn't able to be, uh, completed as he thought and as we thought, but like, as I said in the beginning, uh, he is victorious, and he's in a he's in a victorious place right now, and uh, we will all be raised raised again, in, in our new bodies, in our new flesh, glorified flesh. Thanks be to Jesus. Um, I have one more thing to read, uh, but I know a couple people wanted to share, and Kent, if you don't oh. mind, oh. All right. you can come okay. up here or share. I'll just come to the side. Uh, we have a good friend of ours named Patrick Steele, who spent a lot of time with Dave, and he couldn't be here today with his family. And uh, he asked me to read a short statement that he sent me yesterday. So if you bear with me. on an email which I'm bringing up. This is from Patrick Steele. A few words in honor of my friend Dave Barlow. Dave Barlow gave me a book years ago and said, this will change your life. Read it often. I've only come to realize that Dave himself was the better book. I could start by telling you the story about the hectic day I first met Dave Barlow at the Bookworm Bookstore, or I could say a few words about, about our humorous first impressions of each other. I could share with you all the ridiculous story about the $20 bill and the zoo, but I'm going to keep those to myself. Instead, I want to say a few words about the man we honor today in loving memorial. Every encounter and moment I had with Dave he rescued me. He gave freely and exponent exponentially of himself to me always. He always endeavored to extend love, care, wisdom, and sustenance. Oh, and a darn good story. Whether or not the stories were fact or fiction does not matter. Dave is the real deal. He loved to give and extend himself in the same way a wise man invests his time and assets. He was thoughtful. He brought me lunch countless times, preparing hot soups on cold days, homemade sandwiches he learned from his grandmother, and even occasionally some special hot recipe. I never asked him to do this because most days I already had a lunch pack from home, but he'd say, save it for tomorrow. Dave introduced me to people that he knew would benefit myself and the other person. He was good at networking old school. Dave would send me long text with deep, colorful prose, 
and always extend encouragement and love toward me and my family. Dave loved my family a lot and told me about it often. He saw in his keen way the talents, attributes, and potential of my two daughters. And he admired the resilient, caring way of my wife. He admired noble qualities like integrity, steadfastness, faith, and honor. Chiefly, above all else, Dave loved God. That's the main reason Dave was drawn into our circle of friends. Dave loved prayer and the gathering together of a small fellowship of brothers who gathered together to pray. Those Wednesday nights are some of the most precious memories I have with Dave. I regret not having participated in them much these last two years, but I would discuss this with Dave regularly. He always encouraged me, keep doing what you're doing because it's an honorable thing to serve your family first. He was big on the idea and identity of family. He knew its importance, but still I wish I could have seen him more. In the end, when I last saw him after his surgery, he was great. We laughed when he said he felt abnormally normal. We, we joked and talked for a few hours and then cried a little. He was excited to get into his new apartment in Bryant, to have Mex Mexican dinners at our house, to meet my daughter's new puppy. We parted with this sentiment until we meet again and exchanged our I love yous and that was it. So until we meet Dave again, So until we meet again, Dave, gathering together at the great finale for some sweet fellowship, laughter, and stories, you are more loved and cared for now than you ever were and reunited in eternal bliss with your sweet Savior and with those dear loved ones you have missed for so long. Until we meet again, Patrick Steele, October 20th, 2023. Uh, Patrick loved Dave. I think they talked on the phone as much as y'all talked and as much as I saw Dave, I, the owner of the bookstore, Patrick, was my backup. And so Dave got to know him well through that because Dave came by the bookstore a lot. And uh, when I first moved to Little Rock, he started coming in. And uh, as you know, Dave was, he knew something about everything. <laughs> seem like the man's a walking encyclopedia and uh very interesting and we all know he had the gift of gab as we stated earlier and uh but very sociable very friendly and through just him hanging out at the bookstore that's how i got to know him and through us knowing each other he came out to church when i invited him and he got to know the other guys and uh, as well as andy ameson over to and Stan in the back, and Jacob here, and uh, we were going to miss Dave, because I know you all are, and uh, I know it's a surprise, because we visited him in the hospital as well, and after that heart surgery, it looked like, I mean, he was 100%, and then for pneumonia to come along and, and strike him down, it was, it was tough to take, but uh, we're here to honor a great friend. And, uh, and he will be missed. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and yeah, I, I want to second that. He was always super encouraging to my family, my wife, and children. And in a lot of ways, I was sending pictures of my kids. In a lot of ways, that was like his grandkids in a way. The way he, you know, just lavished praise and encouragement upon us and our family. Um, he was always giving, man, always of himself. And <clears throat> um, I'd like to close with with this before we uh, hear another song. Is there anybody, would anyone else like to share anything, any sentiments? Before, uh, um, there was one Wednesday night, there was a lot, I, I can't even talk to it. It's just too many experiences. But there was one in particular recently that I remember. I, I was always, in our little prayer group, I was always late, at least 30 minutes late because I got two kids. 
and they would kind of joke about it. And Dave would, would kind of joke, you know, but Dave always uh, stuck around as much as he could and talked afterwards. And one night in particular, I could tell toward, it was weird. We never had a formula formalized deal. We kind of just had requests and we talked a little bit. And then we kind of, as we were praying, we kind of let the spirit lead us as we felt like we needed to be led. And sometimes that would go into discussions about theology as we were praying. It was weird. I can't really explain it. And from what I heard David communicated, I think, to Kent, he said, you know, because he came from a real formal structured uh, religious background. And but when he came to our meeting over time, he said, man, this meeting opened up a whole new world to me. And it wasn't any, it was just guys being guys as real as we could be with God and with each other. And there was one night in particular, this was recently, something about what we were praying about was striking me. And I was thinking about Romans 8. And I'm sitting off reading this while guys are praying. And I could tell Kent was like, in his mind, I could tell he's like, hey, it's time to wrap this meeting up. We've been here kind of long. You know, we started late. We need to go. And, and I just took out my phone and started reading this passage. And Dave was lockstep in, man. Like he, he was in there with me. And when I finished reading it, we ended up, he and I ended up sitting there for another 30 minutes. All the guys were done. They were leaving it. We just kept spurring one another on. And, uh, he was right in line with where I was thinking. And he was always like that. He was always like that. If, if, if you were having a spiritual moment that you couldn't necessarily explain, he knew what was going on and he was going to have that moment with you and he was going to contribute to that moment. And when I read this, he was, he was leaning forward in his seat like this. And when I finished reading, uh, I can't remember the exact wording he used, but he was basically like, man, I'm glad you read that like that. I'm glad you read those words like that. And I'd like to read those words again. Because <laughs> it applies to Dave and all of us in this situation. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hopes that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in pains of childbirth right up to this present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit. We groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption into sonship and daughtership, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. That explains Dave's life and explains where he is now. And we know that in all things, all things, pneumonia, anything God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose for those God foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters and those he predestined he also called those he called he also justified and those he justified he also glorified amen amen what then shall we say in response to these things? If God's for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also along with his son graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? 
Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor demons neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in this whole creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I think that wraps up theologically <coughs> and truthfully where Dave is at now. And nothing was able to separate us. Not even this. This is only the birth canal into the new life. And he is, uh, man, he thought his visions were cool before moving to Bryant <laughs> and plugging in the church. He, he, now he's got the full glimpse, the full vision. <clears throat> and one day we will be raised with him. And we will be going through that same canal ourselves into a new life. I'm going to pray and then we'll hear a song. Thanks for letting us be a part of it. I really appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. you. Father God, I, I want to thank you for Dave. I want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for bringing him into this world uh, in the 30s. I want to thank you for the work you've done in his life all these many years. And I want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for bringing him into our little rat pack at the church about seven years ago. And I just thank you for uh, the way you lifted him up and you gave him strength, even in, especially in those last few months where he was struggling so bad. But Jesus, you helped him to stay focused. You helped him to have a positive outlook and attitude, and you helped him to finish strong. And I thank you, Jesus, that when he saw you, he was able to hear you say, well done, my good. And I thank you that you smiled. Lord Jesus, I pray you, 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 you'd help David keep cutting along with short up there. You know, he's telling stories. And, uh, Anyway, thank you for our friends here. Thank you for, uh, just thank you for this place where his old body can rest. And uh, Lord, help us to remember him, to continue to remember him fondly, and to praise you uh, for the, all the good you did in his life. And thanks for letting us be a part of his life. Thanks for putting him in ours. And we love you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Mm-hmm. <clears throat>